Namaste and in La Ketch, and welcome to this episode of One World in a New World. I'm your host, Zen Benefiel, and this week's very special guest is Elsa Dillon. Now, she is going to, well, maybe we'll both kind of blow your mind with a conversation we're about to have, because it's going to be different than anything you've ever heard from us before. We've, uh, I, I've broached this topic before with a uh, gentleman like Steve Bassett and Costa Macreas, who we kind of heads the edge of the UFO and extraterrestrial field. And now we're going to talk a little bit more about a multidimensional aspect of that. And the reason why is because Elsa, along with her husband initially, were internationally known, I still are internationally known, photographers who have a client list to die for. So they come from a very professional background, just to give you an idea. They're not wacko, right? Because <laughs> some people think, right? So we're going to explore that a little bit more. She currently resides with her family of eight children in Byron Bay Hills in Australia on a farm. And her experiences over the last years have been quite extraordinary, along with her family. And we'll be getting into those as we dive into this conversation. Elsa, it's such a pleasure to have you here in a long time apart, it seems like we've uh, come together over many years. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a um, great meeting you. I'm very grateful to be here, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome, I'm, I'm very grateful and, and from across the pond, <laughs> so in a different way. <laughs> So my conversations with others generally stem around the inner voice and how we develop that inner connection as a child and how it accentuates our life, sometimes giving us challenges to grow through as we mature and then how others have been able to take that inner connection and find practical use for it in the outer world. And as you know, we kind of, we live half inside and half outside. And we're generally bereft of the inner understanding, exploration, let alone sharing the conversations with others, most of the time because we feel like we're going to be deemed a little weird, crazy, you know, woo-woo, all those kinds of things that have happened in the past. However, since COVID, it seems like the listening has changed. People are seeking, it's given, you know, the obsession on self-hygiene and sequestration gave people an opportunity to sit still and inquire within. Some did. And it's the understanding and, and the nature of maybe exploring even our design a little further has come to the surface. So in your experience, what began this curiosity that you had about other worlds, and how did you first begin experiencing your inner connection with that aspect of yourself? Well, uh, the you know a lot of how you understand things is uh, they 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 are trying to connect, but you're just not listening or you can't work it out. So, <laughs> um, you know, I've told this story many times on the interviews we've been coming out for over just over a year in social media and the story is that the um, children we shifted to a new farmhouse and the children were sleeping next to a meter box so they were deteriorating two children in the family and we didn't know what was going on and it was um, they were having EMF poisoning basically Mm. And they were aging rapidly. <laughs> it's quite amazing. Like how you see in those movies where someone of youth ages, ages to a 98-year-old sort of thing. And uh, it was too tall and we couldn't work out what it was. And um, the house kept getting electrical shortages twice a week. You know, that's a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and rewiring and, and then they'd come back again and these electricians kept saying to us what's what's with you people you know 
<laughs> it's like your ETs and you're shorting the house out all the time. And I'd never really heard about ETs like this. And a lot of people were calling us ETs. And I was like, what is going on? <laughs> anyway, we kept, we, we weren't religious people, but we were asking the stars at night, can you help us with our children? Because we couldn't find out what it was, what, what they, because there were so many symptoms from the EMF. Mm -hmm. And then one night the meter box blew up, filled the whole house with smoke. And again, these electricians, the dovetailing of them turning up, the synchronicity, they kept saying to us, oh, you must have angels looking after you, you must have ETs. So, well, that night we couldn't. Means that others would give you that kind of reflection already. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, and they are, well, the funny thing is, is they're electrical beings. We call them, you know, the electrical ones. They're around electricity all the time. So, um, anyway, so that night we couldn't sleep and I came across EMF and angels and ETs and how they connect through electricity and water. And it was like, finally, you get it. We shifted mm -hmm. the kids out of the room straight away. Within 24 hours, one of them had a memory recollection because they were losing their memory <laughs> and they were grinding their teeth. Um, they wouldn't heal. Their hair was falling out. <laughs> their skin went to wrinkles. Like, wow. you know, yeah, it was, it was one daughter. Our daughter's face was so swollen on one side. Her eye was completely shut all the time and we couldn't take yeah, them. Apart. Parents, I mean, what you've had to have been, I, I yeah. know for a parent myself, I've got four kids and, and now eight great grandchildren. Uh -huh. However, you know, with, when you lose yourself to your kids, you, you're completely compelled to care for them. And when things like that begin to happen, that's got to be just a, a, a word that comes to mind is excruciating. Yeah. Well, what was also interesting is the reason we had shifted to Byron because it wasn't this um, big, this place has quite had a lot of like celebrities and mm -hmm. fame in it. Um, before we came here, there, we could, this was the only place we could find a home that would take seven children. We only had seven then. So when we shifted from Sydney to here and it was the only home we could find to live in because no one wanted seven children in their mm -hmm. home. So we thought we were shifting to the country. It would be healthier. So for this to happen, in this way it was just you know what's going on <laughs> uh and it just um yeah it just uh as a parent it just sort of like it felt like it was ripping our hearts out <laughs> sure yeah right. anyway it's, so we worked it we worked it's, yeah it's, uh, it's just it, it leaves you almost in a state of fear and and yet what it, i would wonder if there was a sense of something that it, within you that gave you the perspective of this is all going to work out the answers are going to flow the, the things are going to come our lives are going to change as a result were those kinds of things and feelings and thoughts present as well? And and how did they appear during that process? What were the touch points, well, I guess, of, of how you were able to manage your own angst in the process? Well, what, so a six month period and they're all young children at this stage. We mm -hmm. also, the reason we shifted was we were in the financial crisis. So we pretty much just walked away from everything. We just went, that's it. <laughs> that, enough's enough. There you go. Walked away. You we basically had, we had nothing. We just shifted to this country house with our kids and pets. And that's all we had, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> which was fine. Um, cause you know, well, we're, we were all healthy until this point. Anyway, what was interesting is our son. So he, he was a young boy then. So he, on a farm, the kids would get lots of cuts and scratches. So each cut and scratch would swell. It wouldn't decrease. It would grow like, like craters on a moon sort of thing. And then they would join. So the wounds, I felt like the wounds were talking to me <laughs> and they were saying, 
there's an answer to all this. There's an answer to all this. The daughter, she would um, be standing next to me and then she would start screaming in her body and she'd fall to the ground or she'd run outside and climb up a tree and hold on to the tree. I'm going, this is... This is only this is insanity. They're trapped in their bodies. What is going on? And they weren't healing at night. This is what's happening. They weren't resting. They we weren't would healing. provide some interesting grounding, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, hug that tree. I get it. Oh. Anyway, what was interesting? As soon as you move them away from EMF, it's instant healing. It starts straight away. So this was this is a good sign. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we actually found out the owner of the property, their, their son is to today, if he's still alive, he's still in nappies. He's older than me. And he was kept at that same spot where the children were sleeping in the house. So they, they didn't work it out. <laughs> so this is what happens, you know, he's in nappies still. So, huh. uh, yeah, um, it's, um, EMF. So we learn about the electrics and the importance of electrics. Within two weeks of this, I meet this other realm going on. <laughs> and it's connected to dad, my dad, who's Egyptian. And um, they just kind of wouldn't leave me alone. They just kept talking to me and talking to me. And I know with the, I, with the practices that we had been doing cleaning up our act as humans basically like eating better and i knew that if it keeps coming back it's um you've got to you really do have to address it but it just got like any pattern right? yeah. in order to move it on if it's if you don't get it it's keep returning until you yeah. figure it out and and like you know this is one of the things that's wonderful about those who've come before us and how they've written about things on a lot of different levels and Bene Maria Rilke comes to mind in that how he states that you know you can't answer the question with what the well, he doesn't say that you can't ask answer the question with the current thinking that's more Einstein however Rene says that <clears throat> to live with the question is the way to flow <clears throat> toward the answer excuse me yeah and so once you've asked the question. question, you have to wait for life to prepare and provide the answers. And, and as you mentioned in our pre-conversation, there's layers to that, right? You've asked the question, you get a little bit of answer, still not, you know, there's still that, eh, not quite complete yet. Then maybe, maybe I don't have quite everything. And then you have deeper questions or there's a, deeper level of an answer that now because you've had some life experience actually makes sense where it wouldn't have had you not had the prior experience yeah so then it's like i always laugh i always laugh because it's this need to know basis okay so you get this part <laughs> <laughs> and then you get this part and you need to know right as you need to know this is this is obviously past your pay grade at this stage so <laughs> Right. And I'm okay. I'm honestly, I'm okay with that. Uh, and it's experiences like with the kids that make you, you, you go into such um, great surrendering. And uh, I know that this is part of your journey, the surrendering all the way through. You go, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Give it to me. Come on. Came to me some time ago, we ascend at the speed of surrender. Yeah, it's great. Well, it, this is um, so this surrendering to this voice or this these. Messages. Which sounds pretty, you know. Speaking of the voices, I've had this experience as well as I know you have. These are things beyond us, yet we hear, we know that it's in irrefutable that it's happening it's our experience and it's different than others right that most don't have these kinds of experiences and yet for some reason we're able to hear these things um, there's a great interview that i did with jeffrey mishla uh, back a few years ago specifically on hearing voices that's the next <laughs> name the title of the interview is on hearing voices <clears throat> jeffrey being a 
world-renowned parapsychologist was able to ask the right questions and help me expose those things that I went through in order to make sense out of it all. And even in the process, it made more sense to me because I was able to talk to someone about it who was asking the right questions so that I could hear myself speak, right? And does that kind of thing happen to you where someone will ask you a question that, that maybe you haven't asked or been asked before? And then as you're formulating the answer and speaking it, there's more layers of it that kind of just seem to pop in on as you're speaking. Does that happen to you as well? Yeah, just then. Um, <laughs> so you you said that um, you come into this discussion with this gentleman who has a different um, knowledge and understanding of all the uh, uh, Weird doctors, stuff. doctored information. So you have yep. Zen and then you have the, the scientific, I guess, and that's so, this is where we are now in humanity is now we're going to merge those two and by merging these two will come great power for for all of us but um it will take a bit of surrendering on one side at the, mm -hmm. at the moment. well and this is the they, a surrender it's gonna it will it will marry up it will marry up and assist all Absolutely. We've been talking about missing, millennia yeah. in all kinds yeah. of different methods from different sources. They all say we're going to be okay, right? Yeah. <laughs> going to dwell in man. It already is, but it's just, you know, the apocalypse. We, when you ask nine out of 10 people, I would say what apocalypse means, they'll say, oh, it's a catastrophic end of the world. Well, no, that's not what the word means. That's how it's been misconstrued and marginalized with a, a modern narrative that's completely false. The word means uncovering, yeah, revelation. Yeah. So these are the things that we're having happen with this bridge of science and spirituality. I just wrote a series of articles about the bridging of science and spirituality in the world today and how it affects leadership. Yeah. Oh, it will. It will change the leadership. Um, returning to the same leadership to me seems a bit crazy, which I really don't feel that it's going to go that way. Right. It's it's been done too many times. Well, yeah, leadership often is uh, exhausting. Followership <laughs> too, right? Yeah. It, it's yeah. um, and been done many times. So here's a different way of doing it. We got to go inside. Yeah. And yeah. let that natural order emerge. Well, what's that natural order like? What have you found in your query and being able to, because you're a very astute woman with, I mean, you, you've been and done. So you, in order to have done the things you do, have done, you've had to have a very mm, facile mind that you asked the right questions. You figured out how to do stuff. And, and so you had prior training and with your skill set right to ask better questions so how have you found in this quest for understanding the multidimensionality that you're experiencing now what have you found have been the the most salient points of, of understanding or at least being available to the interaction and understanding because this is something that, that's completely different to most people because we don't get quiet enough to have it, first of all. I know, right? It's just so noisy. Well, I'm, you, you can say that, but our house is so noisy. Like yesterday, I wanted to talk to someone and I, I had to say, I can't, I really want to talk to you, but the house is so noisy and buzzy. I can't, I wouldn't be able to hear you. Not clearly, anyway. So <laughs> this quiet, being quiet, and bored, this whole word of being bored is interesting because it's through this boredom that we have creativity. And what have they done with our free time or our bored time is they've they've uh, filled it up. <laughs> and right, so, so why? Why have they filled it up? This is a big question because they know that it comes the next stage comes in the imagination and this is what they've been mm -hmm. i you know i wonder you, you say they know 
So who's that? I'm really curious as to whether they do or not. I, I think it's unconscious and it's just a fascination with the outer world that's taken over, right? Because without yeah. the inner the inner understanding, we're going to do what we know to do because of what we've learned and who we are and, and progress as far as we can from that perspective, not necessarily knowing unintended consequences happen, right? And yeah. we we tend to want to make others responsible or something else responsible when it's our own perspective that we need to have a better management of and openness to, in my opinion. Because if we don't, then we set up this separation and, and there really is none. And in order, how, how would you see, having said that, right, how would you see a different um, out picturing or out playing, if you will, if others weren't held in judgment. Uh, so I'm going to answer the question before and this one at the same time. Sure. So, so what brought me to this is pure frustration as a child from very young, the word no, mm. no, no, you're not doing that now. No, 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 no. And I used to just dislike the word no so much. I was, so I would just come at another angle, come at another angle because I understand that you're saying no to me, but my me does not accept no. So I'm going to come at a different angle. I just used to drive my parents batty. They used to think I was, um, needed lots of um, activities to keep me entertained. And it wasn't that at all. It's just, I knew my path and your answer didn't work with my answer. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, as a short person, um, that was tricky. And it's funny, this word no, as I've come to understand it, and one of the things that they've assisted me with is um, origin, finding the origin of the words and the sound and where it came from. I understand now, no is no now, newing, knowing, newing. It's the gift, it's the presence. And so what was kind of almost felt like my enemy as a child is now the, the gift. And so it was like my training. No was the training. Uh, it helped me to um, work and weave around um, the programs easily because I had no so much as a child that when I got older, I, I would hear no, oh, that's not true. No, this is not true. And I'd be like, well, that's great. But I'm kind of come on a different angle. Right, right. Well, and the no's too, not to interrupt your... Well, to interrupt your, <laughs> let's be honest, right? Uh, <clears throat> it presents challenge. Mm. We do not grow without challenge. Yeah. And when you get presented with the, the halt, no, whatever, it's like, well, wait a minute, why? Yeah. <laughs> What's well, a pause, right? Like you, yeah. you get, it's like you get, it's so you you're on the carriage and you've got the horses going and you're going really fast. You're going really fast. Everything's fine. And then you get slammed on the brakes. And then you've got to come to a halt and work out what the problem is. Is there something on the road? Is there something broken in the wheel? Is there something wrong with the horse? Like, I'm giving this as an example because um, that was how I came differently at the word no. So <laughs> I laugh because now I'm coming at the different angles of now. So then it became like a time thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you sounds... mentioned the, the, the sequences. I was listening to one of your other interviews and, and you were talking about cycles and time and things speeding up and, and stuff like that. And it prompted me to send you a, a copy of Wilbert Smith's memoirs. And in those memoirs, Wilbert ran Canada's UFO investigation program in the 1950s, similar to the US's Project Blue Book. And he actually had conversations with others. In those, one of the things that they said to him was the human's view of time was kind of skewed. To them, with far greater intelligence, time 
was a measurement in the change of entropy. So it would fit, it would seem that as we become more aware of this greater being that we are individually and collectively, that harmony would actually become more present and that the chaos that we once thought was, was just patterns we hadn't recognized yet. And as we understand and integrate those, there's less entropy. And so things can get done quicker. And in this shift that we're having in the planetary civilizations, consciousness, if you will, because we all feel it, right? We just don't know how to describe it yet. In this, though, there's a greater sense of, of this speeding up and things and anticipating rather than being anxious. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. You're laughing. It's like, yeah. No, I'm not laughing. So yeah, I'm laughing. I'm la laughing because, um, sorry, because um, the origin word of all those things um, comes back to the same thing. It comes back to this cycle comes back to this black void it comes back to they can't see past this point and it comes back to the word harmony and um so the messages we had this week was that we're in the right era i was like what we're in the right era we're in the right era we're in the right era so it keeps playing on me right era right era. and then they showed me it's like the gold era, the gold era. And then they showed me that it's the, we're coming into the era before age. So we understand. Interesting time. perspective. Yeah. So we, we've done a full circle and now we're coming into um, before age was known. So we're like either we're returning on to that and then we can go from there on another angle now. Mm -hmm. But um, this Interesting you say time that, and space has to be, I, I, I got a lot of it from those words. You said this or those. I, yeah. I listened, I have to, I'll just tell you, I listened to my connection with Zen. And I listened to uh, one of his interviews and all the way through the interview, I got, <laughs> I, got I got you you've been waiting for these messages and I was listening and I go, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. So it was like, um, it was like reading, um, a, a novel and having an aha moment. <laughs> so it was uh, quite, it was, it was good. I, it's nice when that happens because you know that you're meant to connect. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's what I hope. Yeah. I, I, I know the feeling, I know the sensation as you do. It's the expression of it and, and sharing the things that open the door for others to have it as well. Yeah. And then they go, well, I know my whole family and friends call me crazy, but I just heard Zen speak about it. I just heard Elsa speak about it. And then they go, I'm okay. And then you get over your whole self, you get over all of that, and then you actually work out the messages. So you're getting on with it. Right. Well, getting on frequency. with it is, yeah, but getting on with it is the quickening process. And this quickening process that you speak of in the last month, I've come to realize that the sun is reflecting us. The sun's excited by our energies doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's creating more solar flares. It's getting excited like we are. So it's quickening. It then we're attracting comets, asteroids pass, which always pass Earth, but maybe possibly more might pass as this is happening, this quickening. And then the solar flares melt the hydrogen around the plasma tar and then rains on us more. So then we keep getting upgraded. So this is part, see how it's like a, a quickening process. So we react the sun, the sun heats up the whatever's passing by, it rains down on us, upgrade us, upgrade. This is why they they keep saying this whole light beam thing, we're not meaning it that way. We're meaning light in your body. Be light in the way you feel. Be light in the way you approach things. Be flexible. Don't hang on to your memories. Your memories 
and your visions are just there as tools for mm -hmm. the man. Man's story, mem story, memory is a story, a tale, a tale. <laughs> That's they're just tales for you to use, but we have to what learn was it? To yes, let go. Tales of topographic oceans, right? Yeah. Uh, and we are on the ocean of emotions seeking safe harbor. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're here to help. Um, you know, folks like you and I have, who have really different experiences and have been kind of tapped on the shoulder to help others, to facilitate, as I was told earlier. You know, leadership tends to have followers and or dictate followership. That's not what it's about. This is about individual empowerment and uh, and even, you know, if you look at the progression of time and all the data that we have from our past, calendars, scriptures, all the legends, myths are pointing to this time. And that in this upwising, if you will, <laughs> we have an opportunity to come together as one. Well, we've got this concept of oneness, we don't necessarily how it know how it plays out. And so, it, it, <laughs> but looking back at the Vedantic philosophy, right, which states that we're all, it, it, we're in this unity consciousness, we're threads connected to it, incarnate, capable of becoming God and goddess. But we don't, we hear that as blasphemous because of how, what we've been preached to through modern religion. That we can't be that. The no, right? Yeah. You no. can't. Right? <laughs> well, what is our design? Who are we? What are we? Do we have a perfected form, fit, and function based on the skill sets we've developed and the consciousness that we carry? We just haven't asked the questions yet to guide us into that direction because we haven't realized that we could go there. Yeah. Yeah. So, now, how do you find this relative to the, the interactions that you've had? I love how you call them the spin beans, right? Uh, <laughs> they, there really is when you're considering um, the spin that there's a bi-directional spin that goes on inside of us that creates the ability to condense into form in my opinion i'm not sure yet because science hasn't proven that part of it yet however what what do you see in the compatibility the corroboration in, in what you've learned from your interactions and and what these non-human in, intelligences have shared uh they've showed me magical things <laughs> they've showed me that i can heal my body really fast not only mine the kids the children the animals wildlife <laughs> um uh, showed... by design yeah and uh it's just like you said it's the god goddess within us and just um uh, understanding that and um they've showed me that you can um col colonize your atoms in your body and the more you do it and the more you practice it daily that that you you really do run your show your you run the show of you mm -hmm. and um you do anyway it's just you become more aware of facilitating it better yeah, well, well, you can talk, you talk to yourselves, mm -hmm. yourselves, yourselves, elves, selves, you know, you talk to the selves of you. And so you find so out to, your pain spots. To edify yeah. that selves point, if I may, because I, I like to corroborate, you know, things that, that guests bring up in, in other ways, saying the same thing differently, in other words. So my direct experience of having the nine planes of consciousness the facilitation of it was to integrate or connect the nine bodies on each of the or one on each of those planes of consciousness so that they're all aligned it's fascinating and and yet yeah. it's so still magical because the science hasn't revealed itself yet in the uh, 
uh, data acquisition forms, right? <laughs> mm. Just a knowing, it's an experience, it's an understanding beyond the general knowing sense. So yeah. please continue. Same set, uh, same same, which is a big one for me because same same is uh, same same or stem stem or same one. It's one one. Um, and one 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 oh oh one one oh 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 is the binary system, and they keep showing me that once time and space is um, surrendered, <laughs> which it's coming, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's coming in a big way. Um, when time and space is surrendered, then the number system will surrender with that. And you'll realize that one and one and oh one one oh oh one one is uh it's just code and it's um binary it's, code, right? It's the binary code and it's our DNA treasure map of our gold. And the more we tap into that bit by bit, step by step, <laughs> uh or well, it will and as you're talking us, about yeah. the spin beings, you know, that the the zero and one, right? Uh, uh -huh. I've also got a book I called the, the title Zero to One, making our way, <laughs> making our way toward a conscious civilization, right? <laughs> and my reference was to a type one civilization on, on the Kardashev scale. However, in the aspect of the spin beings, you've got the polarity. It's like the yin and yang. It creates spin. Yeah. Right? Those polarities, when we don't attach judgment condemnation, criticism, right? We just let it be. It has its own spin that then we can nudge yeah. directions that are more appropriate for it to go simply by applying our attention, intention, and interaction to do so. It's a fascinating and magical process that it's near ineffable. Right or has been, we're talking about it now, which is something that didn't happen fifteen five years ago, even. Yeah, this so, is new. It's really cool. It is. It's really cool. Uh, it's foreign, so it feels alien, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. yep. um, but this is how we create. New stuff high, does. Hi, yeah. Well, this is <laughs> this was a big one for me. Constant change. And mm -hmm. I was warned about it and obviously I didn't digest it enough. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is this a stage in my life two, two years ago now where I was taken out, broke my back with a horse. So I was out for three months. So mm -hmm. I got the first message I got was a triangle mark on my back, which was Delta. And then the horse shoe, which was really deep um it was a big c so it was delta c so constant change and this is the only constant this is the only constant is constant change the delta yeah, yeah. it's funny you mentioned that i had the, the delta looked like a delta scoop on my uh, right bicep um, I got it when I was really young, probably during the time that I had my initial experiences of going on board ship that I was shown but not given full awareness of at the time um, and didn't realize that that's what was happening until I read it in <laughs> Ruth Montgomery's Strangers Among Us 15 years later. Uh, it was bizarre. And yet, what a shock, right? When, when you, you have these experiences as a kid, you don't think about them because they're just cool. Right. Can't wait for it to happen again. And, and this experience for me happened a couple of times a month over a two year period from the time I was eight to 10, uh, rising up and, and getting out of bed, and walking out across the yard and climbing a fence into a pasture and then rising up into an orange cigar shaped cloud that I would go into it and wake up in bed the next morning. No memory whatsoever. Just couldn't wait to go back. I had the sense of it was so much fun. Right. And then having that awareness presented to me in a bookstore, the book actually fell off the shelf in front of me, right? And then, you know, these kinds of weird things, magical things happen, 
others, right? It's like, okay, here's something for you. <laughs> and I'll place it in front of you so that you cannot deny that something magical is happening, like a book dropping off a shelf in front of you with nobody else around, right? Those kinds of things are just so bizarre. And, you know, so these kinds of the, the triangle, right? The delta, um, the change, and the an attachment to the outcome of the change how do you so, deal with that okay so so this is this is the story of you know the mom of eight so um a people cross our paths at the the most divine moment right so i meet zen today but uh, last week I, I sort of took a week off and I didn't know why I sort of pulled back a little bit last week. I now I'm like, what? Maybe I knew this was going to happen. I got um, bites on my head, <laughs> and I couldn't. It was really painful. It was after um, my last interview last week on Friday morning, mm. and it was very painful. A lot of blood because it kept scratching it. Mm -hmm. And I said to the kids, "Can you have a look at it?" And they took a photo and they went, "You know, it's a triangle." I went, what? And she said, they've bitten you in a triangle. And I, I don't know if it is a bite because there's no ray. So is it coming out of your head? And I've gone, oh, really? <laughs> Can you take a photo? So they took a photo and they, they measured it again. And it's exactly the same. It's a it's triangle. A lateral. Uh, and yes. you know, so you bring up something that's really interesting. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, go ahead and finish this. But I... Well, <laughs> the triangle is pointing this way. To me, it always feels like it's going north east so this message of right angle has been with me for some time now since 2017 mm -hmm. and it was from your words in an interview where you said these and those are and i know that people from our audiences will go back and they'll um almost time stamp everything you said because they'll go back and listen to your videos and watch when you hear zen say these and those these and those, these and those, those and these, they showed me that it's the O and the E and they gave me the message that it's, um, it eventually came to, it's the right era, mm -hmm. the right era. I had Lyme disease all week, all down my here, all down my neck from these bites, mm -hmm. which I've had, I've had before. So my body remembered and healed with it quite quickly. I thought we got rid of it we drained it out within two or three days but it's quite painful some of these experiences <laughs> sure. you, uh, because they think. want you to pause you know they, they oh know, yeah you've got to sit with this <laughs> and so i'm draining it out draining it out and uh then i hear zen say those and these and those and these is uh they show is an eternal circle and they kept showing me a gold circle and they kept showing me that this is the way the place is it looks very dark and void but this is the way to the gold circle and you know i still haven't fully un unsolved what are the full meaning of it i'm sure it will come as i need to know it but you know first layer you this got gold ring okay. huh? this yeah this gold ring or maybe thing. the second third and, and there's more <laughs> Yeah, it's like part, this is part one. Like the, oh, what was it on? Uh, <laughs> what the heck was this show? Stargate, right? With where they have those rings that come down for the transports for, um, I forget the name of the beings, but uh, uh, the guys, rings were they? Flying pyramids, right? They would have these rings that would come down around an individual as part of, of their um, transport system, kind of like Star Trek, and they're. they're beams right and different kind of thing but it just reminded me of that yeah the, well, what I, oh, I, yeah well what came up was the the insects right nature how nature interacts with us that we don't even realize luba and i were on the back porch one day the energy was really high one night couldn't sleep so 11 11 30 we're sitting on the back porch light on uh talking about deep stuff which we always do and I kept hearing this buzzing, and I could, and I could tell it—it it was a honeybee. 
didn't know where it was. And this is 1130 at night, right? So honeybees don't generally fly around. Yeah. So I, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm looking around and, and finally I see it. It's right in the center of the dome light on our patio. And it's not moving. It's just flying stationary. And I, I have to chuckle, right? That, because the thought was there immediately. Be light. Yeah. <laughs> and I said yeah. that to Luba and we both had a nice laugh. And I said, no, okay, so let's experiment. Now, deepen your awareness of that. Since we got the message and, and we both agreed, you know, that was the message. Let's deepen our awareness and see if the bee changes its flight. And so we kind of, you know, took a breath and, and deepened our, got more centered. And sure enough, the bee started flying in about a six inch diameter circle immediately. And it's okay, mm -hmm. let's try this again, right? It's like one time it, it, it's random, twice is a pattern. So let's try it again. So we deepened even further. And sure enough, it started flying around the edge of the dome light. And, you know, in those moments, what can you do other than be in awe? Yeah. And then eventually, you know, it took a, a <clears throat> metal process was probably wasn't that long, maybe 60 seconds, minute and a half to have that conversation and, and observe all those things. Those moments are what provide us with the serendipity and synchronistic attitudes of how things correlate, what's going on inside of us, right? And the outer reflection that nature offers when we become aware and start asking for those correlative moments, if you will. We're just becoming aware of how connected we are and the messages that we get when we let go of our prescriptive notions of how reality is supposed to be. Yeah. How I difficult see. was, was you? <laughs> I know this makes sense because you've experienced <laughs> it, and, you know, you resonate with it. So how, how did that first present itself to you? And, and what were the thoughts that you had about how nature does reflect to us as a teacher? Oh, with um, a child, I used to do a lot of art. And, um, you know, I learned that it was the, the disabled children um, they were able to do art really well and easily because they switch off the mind. Mm -hmm. um, our art teacher would make us paint upside down. <laughs> um, and we also learn about, um, I fell in love with the impressionists. I love how it allowed the viewer to finish the artwork. And so then you're engaging your audience with you. So this was, these were great teachers. I also saw the the art was a great way for many that are going through this process back then to express themselves how to how to get out to these and those, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. Um, and and this is what I find with a lot of creative ones is that this is how they get out to the these and those without being the crazy one. <laughs> it's an expression to, it's a it's a release because <laughs> oh, it, it's what it's trick it's so tricky right having all this information in you and then you have nowhere to share it and this is when it i feel it if you aren't able to share it in some form it then starts to eat you up and this is what right, happens because to me. Dis so it causes disease in your body you know, it, it, it causes it, it, disease you, Right, yeah. and that can yeah. manifest in a lot of different ways depending on how know, how attached and, and how deeply yeah. anchored those mm -hmm. what turn out to be mostly self-deprecating perspectives of yourself. Yeah, because we have you know seventy thousand thoughts a day. How many of those? <laughs> are self-deprecating, right? Most of the time we're beating up on ourselves. Why do we do that? You know, when you're realizing that you're part of a greater whole, 
and you're perfect just the way you are, right? Your past doesn't matter. It's just the present moment. And the more you can love yourself in that, of course, then, then you can unpack what that self-love actually means in a lot of different areas. So just do your research, right, to our viewers. Once you begin to get in touch with yourself, it feels almost foreign because you're oh. used to giving your power away instead of reclaiming it. Now, that doesn't mean you become um, a dictator, except over your own thoughts and energy. Right? You have yeah, no control over anybody else because yeah. you don't have it. The yeah. only thing you have control over is how you think and choose to feel. Oh, yeah, so it's your history. So it's your memory. I like the and her story better. Well, his 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 story and her story are the same thing. If mm -hmm. actually, when the more I origin word his, his is actually starts with her. So, so I, one day we're going to work out who the chicken and the egg is, but it doesn't really matter. But it's funny because it's her, her, her is the the first story. Uh, her actually comes back to the word ta, which comes back to the meteorites going past. So it's that royal rain on us, which then the royal rain on us from these meteors becomes this, like you said, the God and the goddesses are because we're being rained on. And so. Hopefully we don't get an asteroid. Well, We've been there, done that. Had a mass yeah, extinction uh, event because of it. I don't think we I, need that. No, I, I think we'll probably have some close ones come past, but I, I. We do need some kind no. of cataclysmic event, not necessarily the destruction of yeah. everything, right? However, humanity doesn't respond unless there's some kind of huge challenge, like the pandemic, right? That gave yeah. us an inkling of, okay, here it is. What are you going to do? Yeah. Well, I feel when this, we had uh, March 1, and there's ones that cross the, the uh, our path in Gaia or whatever this realm is, and they passed annually, right? And then there's these ones that come past that that weren't planned, <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, what's happening is the law of attraction. So these are getting pulled in because of us becoming lighter beings. So it's like this big chain reaction, um, and they knew this time was coming. They they they've been prepping us for so long. It's just, are you listening? Are mm -hmm. you listening? So if you can. Uh, each day be like the insects and the animals and have rise and set, rise and set. So you rise and reset, you rise and reset. So those 7,000 thoughts that you had. 70,000. So, oh my it's gosh, huge, really? Right? Oh my God, it's even bigger. I don't know who <laughs> they were that determined all that, but it's an accepted <laughs> number in the neuroscience. Oh, I, in our family, it'd be like, what happens if they lost count? They'd have to start all over again. <laughs> yeah, well, then you got the next day, right? So you got 70,000 thought, well, yeah, that's right, a huge right. number, right? I can't even imagine. So you, you, so what humans do is they take those 70,000 and then they take it to the next day and they weight themselves down. So then they start waiting and waiting and waiting all their ions down and it becomes heavy and hard work and if each day you can debrief and share with however that is, because everyone has a different way mm -hmm. and you then go to the next day and refresh and then the next day and refresh, then you have the anchors are released. They're just tools. They're not the anchors anymore. They're just, instead of it being hooked in, it becomes literally a, like a, something you would cut the grass with, um, right. you know, like a gardening tool. And you, just use it as, right. yeah, you just use it as a tool. That's it. Yep. And and the same with the mind. The mind's just a tool too. It's all the ego. It's not your enemy. It's there as a tool. Everything you have. Just remember transcends to we ego transcends to we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, you've got to use them as your friend because this is this is what we come here with, right? You can't take it with you. Yep. We know that. But you have it here for now. So use it in your now. 
and uh, it will it will make us lighter, and we will all lift together in our own ways. We'll all lift together, and this will raise the intelligence and draw in more. And Absolutely. this is the quickening. This is the quickening. And it's but allowing. It's scary. Yeah. It, it can <laughs> be. Not, it, and yeah. for most people, it, it, it seems to be at this point because of the seeming chaos in the world. And we don't know what, you know, how things are going to transpire. And, and yeah. yet we do have choice in that, too, as a collective in, in learning how to work together to make things happen uh, or to facilitate, not necessarily, necessarily make, because it's all emerging. You know, we're given all of these things for us to ask questions about, including the construct, right? The, you mentioned earlier about the uh, how we're drawing things, the law of attraction and the asteroids and meteorites and, and things like that. And, you know, there's patterns that are in place, that are ancient, if you will, um, for the, the movement of our solar system, our universe, our super universe, you know, the great... <laughs> you know, multiple universes are all moving. And when we consider the potential of an intelligence that's at the core of all of it and how finely, extremely intimately tuned it is in order to provide all of these things. <laughs> I mean, it just, uh, you know, it's just unfathomable to think of the magnitude of this consciousness. Well, what I noticed early on in, in my journey was that there was this replication of the Trinity, right? It, it's in all religions. It's in, you know, even in our constructs of reality, the proton, electron, and neutron, right? And so I had a question of where did this originate? And so one of my experiences in, in summer of 89 and, and reconnecting after my divorce and, and realigning my wife, uh, my life, you know, that too, never could realign her, unfortunately. Okay. However, um, my guide shows up. I was going through a process called multi-plane or multi-level awareness where you, it's a facilitated process where you examine your chakras um, get in touch with your guides, you can look at the Akashic records, those kinds of things, self-exploration, right? Facilitated. So um, the facilitator is prepping me to go into this, and my guide shows up that I'd met as a teenager when I was reading Castaneda's works and thought, okay, do I have a guide or ally? Well, one finally showed up, his name was Zephyr, uh, and the moment he showed up, I saw this ancient Indian's face looking at me with eyes that were deep warm and yet could completely see through me <laughs> and so he shows up waves his hand says come and so i leave my body we're traveling through the universe and, and stars go by for a little bit and then nothing and i'm trying to query him as to where we're going what we're going to do so we end up instead talking about the few years that I hadn't seen him and kind of doing a recap. And then all of a sudden we show up at this three sun system with about a dozen um, really small green planets in comparison. I mean, they were dwarfed by the size of these three suns. And the suns were um, white, gold tinge, rainbow sparkle kind of uh, and I'm at the parameter with Zephyr and I, and I feel like Jodie Foster coming out of the wormhole, right? Tears streaming down my face. I'm just in awe of what I'm witnessing. Then I hear multiple voices as one say, we are not only your forefathers, we are also the forefathers of your solar system. I want to ask questions. And Zephyr says, nope, that's it. You got all you need. You'll figure it out. No. So back we need can. To know. <laughs> <laughs> they do that often. It's like, uh, you got the information figured out for yourself, <laughs> which we need to be able to do, right? So on the way back, we're talking about it. And I, I mean, it was almost immediately. Here's the macro. Well, the micro would be the proton, electron, and neutron. And the consciousness is in the space in between, right? That manages it all. We just don't get that well the only thing that doesn't fit there is the hydrogen atom but it's only got two it's proton and electron or proton and neutron 
However, hydrogen, most prevalent gas in the universe, powers our sun, speaking of sun, and is the bonding agent for a DNA helix. Hmm. Now, how is that for continuity throughout, right? Does consciousness actually transmit through the hydrogen atom? I don't know. You know, we don't have the technology yet to bring that about or understand it. However, it sort of makes sense in a weird way. Well, this is one of our beliefs. We see, so we have the schooling system, which we don't believe, and then we have ours. So we have our beliefs. So we've we've heard this, and that's great. And thank you. And there's a few things we picked out of it, and a few ingredients, but we've left that out there. And then we have how we feel, and we watch the environment, and uh, we've got you know did the ancients ways as well and we believe uh, IQ is IQ is eyes in queue <laughs> literally it's in you're in a queue and I don't choose to be in a queue as a creator because if I'm in a queue I'm being um, channeled in only one direction so mm -hmm. um, I'm, ha I'm happy for those that have high IQ and I'm I'm excited for them. Unless you're in a queue at a bull ring and then you never know where you're going to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, they're fine. So we're over there with IQ. I, I understand is um, how we've noticed seed, seeds grow. It's uh, in, the intelligence is in the water. And so we've seen. Um, Again, modified hydrogen seed. atoms. Yeah, right. I know. This is why I'm bringing it up. So right. we believe the intelligence is in the water, and the so the other intelligence. So the that we come here and we have two streams through us. We have water and air, the two streams, mm -hmm. and I believe this is where the intelligence is. The intelligence is in the space between myself and the computer, and the space around that we we take for granted almost it's mm -hmm. the intelligence is in there and the intelligence is in also the the water which seems to hold the memory codes of it and well and we're so, 60 to 70 percent water this is masaru emoto's work right that where how yeah. we think programs the water right so we shove <laughs> stuff down into our water body yeah. and then wonder you know some if we shove the right stuff you know if we're open and, and this goes back we we're talking about anxiety and anticipation earlier the gut feeling the qu the quickening yeah. right when we feel that so it's a fluttering in the gut butterflies it, it's really quite strong <laughs> it's just gentle right it's a sign just to become aware uh -huh. and we often think something's going to be wrong. And so we are filled with anxiety and project these fear laden constructs as to what might happen. And as it's been proven, 99.9% .9 of the fears we project never happen. So why do we do that? Because that's the condi conditioning. So do you want the quickening or the conditioning? And I'm going, I want the quickening. Yeah. I'm happy with the uh, quickening. Quick, I'm happy with the, the nodding. No. <laughs> the conditioning that we've all had, uh, we've all had a taste and it's kind of tired now. It's had its, it's had its course. And they knew that the course was going to end. The course ended really, it did really end back in 2012, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, this is what we're, what we're seeing and experiencing now is this echoing, and, you know, things that I think everyone thought it was going to happen like that. <laughs> and that's funny. <laughs> but I don't think things in things that need choice to manifest does. and move. The yeah, choice happens even, like that. The choice happens like that. Yes. And, and then it takes time. And, and this yeah. is without time, we wouldn't have experience. Right. Mm -hmm. it, in 2012, for our viewers, in case you weren't aware, the winter solstice of 2012 was the apex of what's been called the segue between ages and fits into the Mayan calendar. 
And so there was a segue, 50-year window, opened in 87, closes in 2037, of which the solstice of 2012 was the apex of that. Rapidly rising consciousness and uh, awareness was indicated from 87 to 2012. And you can look at all the books, CDs, videos, movies, all the kinds of things to see the evidence that that curve was almost the same as the information curve. Now, apex, 2012, tip, the, the tipping point, what do you do afterwards? Well, once you've garnered this intelligence, awareness, consciousness, you carry it with you everywhere. Well, what happens? It affects everyone around you and others affect you as well. The more clear you are, and even with this, now that in the subtle energy field, what doesn't harmonize comes to the surface <laughs> right yeah. so we're seeing all the chaos in the world appear the financial systems you know the 20 2008 right mm -hmm. uh, crash um all, all the child trafficking stuff the now we've got a couple of wars pitted against the the west and um and russia right where there's an enemy that's created that wasn't ever there Right. And my wife's Russian. I, I know more about the Russian people than most on the planet because we've had really in-depth discussions about it with her and others. And so there's just the same as we are. So there's this fictitious effort at creating a false enemy simply for acquisition. We're nothing but a bunch of freaking Ferengi. <laughs> right? Law of acquisition. Well, that, that keeps us it, the will of it, it becomes heightened because they want to keep you out of your imagination because they know the imagination they can't see. I don't want to give them that remote. much credit that they're that smart. I don't think they are. Well, I think they're just <laughs> ego driven and they're they got the blinders on. They don't give a shit about anything else but what they can acquire and who they can control. Now, so, how that happens may be yeah. because they're trying to dampen the intelligence. I don't know if they're smart enough to realize that there's an intelligence way beyond theirs. Oh, they know. <laughs> they do know. I suspect that some do, right? Yeah. However, that's they... not controllable. The consciousness that we're talking about, you can't minimize. You can't mitigate it. it it's going to rise to the surface no matter what. Hmm. And it is. Our conversation is part of that process. We couldn't have had this conversation just a few years ago. No. Now, because of our own desire to be here now and to share that world, that magically, you know, or maybe not so, brought uh, us together. Yeah. So you have the dovetailing the synchronicity and this is the excitement part of it it's the it's to it's a confirmation and it's to play with you it's to lighten you up and get, and get you in this space then you go how can this be how can this be so then you start to do all the research um, you go through all zen's books <laughs> and you go wow that i oh that was me or that was that was my friend. She went through this. Or this was my grandmother. She went through this. So you you start to see the similarities in all of us, and that we're all the same. We're all the same around the world, but we're all also really different mm -hmm. skill sets. But yeah. that goes yeah. back to that perfected form, fit, and function in the world for which we we were designed to participate in. Yeah, and they don't. Is not interested in the clones and the clowns and they will you see they are fallen, they just disappear you're here to create and be your full form your full spin mm -hmm. and uh and that's what the other beings the, you know the spin beings you call them spin yeah. beings i just call them the guys right ah, <laughs> um they you know because i've had a lifelong experience with them on multiple levels, being on board ship, being in council meetings, being part of the Galactic Federation, even being, uh, and I'll share this, with, although I may regret it later, 
um, yeah. <laughs> being known as the son of Ashtar to a number of people and being announced as that on stage in 2000, which was a really vulnerable place for me to be willing to have that happen. Even though it felt congruent, felt resonant, afterwards, because of that announcement, it, it was like, okay, it brought out all those that were dissenters, right? They believe in all this stuff. Yeah. They're kind of like Christians, right? They believe in all these miracles and anything's possible, but you show it to them, and the first they want to do is crucify you. Yeah. Gosh, oh, that's an old really? pattern. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I see you brought up some big topics. So I'm going, which way am I going to go? Am I going to go down with you here? Oh, I love um, the rabbit holes, don't you? Yeah, I know. So I'm just like, okay, because I know um, your audience is very savvy to all of this because they've been on this journey with you, right? So, and it's we've taken it a lot. new level with this conversation. Yeah. Okay. So Ashta, Ashta, mm. Ta. Ta is the plasma intelligence. Plasma intelligence is classed as the frozen mud, which has the hydrogen around it. So it comes past us. The sun melts it again. I know I'm repeating myself, but and then it royal rain, right? So this process of education is repeat and rin rinse and repeat. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have eight kids, so always yeah. there's always one that didn't hear it. So, <laughs> including myself, I have to hear myself say. Oh, so, that's the, we don't need counselors. The counselors ask us questions. What we, the better the questions, we get ourselves, get to hear ourselves speak our answers. And that's how we yeah. assess. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing harder than hearing your own voice say it. Let me tell you. So, oh, yeah. So you have Ash, yeah, you have Ash Ta. Ta is, um, what the, the, the word Ta means mummy. That's where it comes from. Ta is the black. It's the frozen mud and it's the plasma intelligence. And this is how planets are created. So uh, asteroids pass us with bacteria, uh, plasma, ta intelligence and hydrogen ion, which is water. This is what creates planets. <laughs> what they don't know, they got here. So this is to other, uh, maybe another topic for another time is the uh, ancient alien DNA. They don't know how that got here. And this one is, um, this is not all ancient aliens, but this is one version, is yeah. uh, the parasites and the viruses. They don't know how they got here. They can't work it out. <laughs> Guess where they hang out? At your place of entry, your spleen, mm -hmm. your stomach. So this is where you have your butterflies and your gut feeling. We go on and on about this in our interviews. Um, and the Aborigines are, are where the, the indigenous philosophy of the three brain system come from. They got the heart and the head, right? You process, you feel things deeply. That's where the vibrations are. Science proven that now today. Then you process in the heart. Is it resonant or not? Is it, or in the Taoist way, is it desirable or undesirable? And then you have that information in your head. Now that you've processed it, you can make better choices as to what to do with it rather than allowing it just to run rampant in your head and cause all kind of goofy disease in your body. So we, our family, believe through um, the texts that we've read is um, going back to Shakespeare, is uh, back to that era, the mm. spleen was the heart. So you said the three, so it went the gut feeling, then it went the heart, but we know the heart. So, so we had the cross, they moved the cross on us. They changed our path by telling us that our heart is up here. Now the cross has returned and I feel like this is why we're on path again, the cycle, because the we're understanding that it comes. The the two forces before they start spinning. Ah, but if you're spinning it with the cross up here, it's out of alignment. Yep, it wobbles. <laughs> it wobbles. We will wobble, but they don't it fall goes, down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it 
Yeah. So if you have it now on center point, which is what the Indian cultures believe in, you know, the fifth element, all this. Mm -hmm. So, but so you said three, so you have the, so we, so change it around to our, the Dylan version. (laughs) We have the spleen, that's the heart. Then the heart we class as the pulse, the pump, the drum. Mm -hmm. I think they call it the dorsal and it pumps out. So, um, well, in and out, every and then it goes to the heartbeat, head. it's the condensing and, and, and the expansion of our electromagnetic field with, with each of those pulses. Yeah. Yeah. So it goes, um, uh, spleen, then it goes pump and then it goes the tool. So it comes up. <laughs> so does it come up and back down like a shaft? Is it like the hook hole thing? Um, Is it under? The unk. <laughs> Another big topic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we won't it's, get into that. TD just it's yet. So, right? It's fun. Uh-huh. It's fun. It is fun. I have to say, um, to, to be quiet for so long and then to meet someone like yourself and lots of other people that we've met is, um, it's just so much fun. It is. It's so nice. It's so refreshing because you can, all the things that have been floating around in your head that you had to go, not now, go sit over there for a bit. <laughs> you go, he knows this. He's not, he not only knows this, he's experienced this. And this is far greater than any IQ for me. You know, this is, uh, these moments, um, of coming together with ones like yourself is, um, yeah, you, you've been waiting. It's it's an it's um, it's reciprocal. Yeah, and it just right. feels so good. It feels like you're coming home. I know. I hear other people say this all the time. And what are we coming home to? We're coming home to the same, same, the sem sem, the stem. We're coming home. So we are. But you have to come. Home. A, we're we're yeah. coming home, and uh, we're <laughs> about out of. Uh, well, closing time. time, right? No, I it, felt like two closing minutes. Time. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> one last thing I want to ask for those who've begun to connect with, and especially listening to us now, what kind of advice could you give them to help their journey be less bumpy? Well, yesterday I because I still flip out. I still have moments where I have to, how am I going to manage all this? And we call it the land of 3D or the 3D moments Mm. because we still have to uh, have this dance (laughs) and that's okay. Um, You can choose the tunes too. Yeah. So I just, I just walked. (laughs) I just went and walked. Sometimes I garden, grounding, uh, or just sitting in the sun and uh, drinking water with a bit of salt in it sometimes can just washing the dishes. I, th- I mean, these things sound so, I guess, boring. They're not as exciting, but I, the, 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 the things and the things that happen in those moments, because I mean, they're allowing, I mean, I'm doing something enough to keep me occupied, whether that's rest or washing the dishes, mm. but then but then it, it takes me out of the control. Yeah. It's like your mind's over here doing busy, doing something. Yeah. And yeah. there's another part of you <laughs> that's available as a result. Oh, that's so, it's so like you, you go, okay, we have to put the, the mind in the kid's corner. Now they get all the blocks to play with. So you come and play with the box. You come and dig at the garden. You keep digging. So while you're digging, now we're going to have this go on over here and I did this yesterday. I had to do it for longer than normal. Obviously the energy was heightened and we noticed it. We had um, a lot of births in the farm and a lot of deaths yesterday in the farm. So it was a heightened day. Right. Mm. And, um, so I went and did this walk and I felt like I came back and I was like, okay. (laughs) And so if that helps a lying on the ground, just lying on the ground sitting on the ground just uh or sitting near a tree 
uh, you will, I, 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 sometimes I, you know, I do get a, a nice feeling when I'm on the computer, but generally, um, I have to get off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As much as I want to read the information and things like this and listen to, you know, some great people speak, I have to get off. So I have to go, okay, I really do need to limit my time on here. The lights do things to your skin, um, and the energy from the electrics, your, your body just, I don't, it's not, I don't think it's meant to be designed to be there too long <laughs> or cope <laughs> at this I stage. Anyway. Everything in moderation. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter what it is. Don't judge yourself. Um, also, this has just been phenomenal, uh, wonderful, deep, rich, resounding, high level, if we can put it in that perspective, conversation that I don't get to have very often. And thank you for it. Mm, I feel very much the same. So thank you. Uh, and namaste and in law catch. And thank you all for sticking with us for this episode of One World, <laughs> a New World. I'm Zen Benefiel, your host, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>